Three decades ago, Miguel Ocubier released a groundbreaking paper that ignited the imagination of scientists worldwide with the provocative prospect of warp drive propulsion. Thirty years later, despite notable progress, our journey towards this fantastical frontier is not without its challenges. However, within the maze of obstacles, there exists a key that holds the power to unlock the mysteries of warp drive technology. It is the cornerstone upon which the entire endeavor hinges on. To unravel this puzzle, we must embark on a thrilling expedition through the archives of warp drive research, tracing our steps back to the visionary brilliance of Alcubierre himself. Nineteen ninety four. Physicist Miguel Cubier published a paper titled The Warp Drive Hyperfast Travel Within General Relativity in the journal Classical and Quantum Gravity. Alcubierre's paper operates within the framework of Einstein's general theory of relativity, which describes gravity as the curvature of space time caused by matter and energy. The concept of warping space time is central to the idea of the warp drive. Alcubier proposes the creation of a warp bubble around a spacecraft. This bubble would contract spacetime in front of it and expand it behind it, effectively creating a region of warped spacetime within which the spacecraft could travel faster than the speed of light relative to the surrounding space. It would take another six years for his paper to gain the attention of physicists and science fiction enthusiasts, thanks mostly to advancements of internet communications. However, his idea went mainstream a decade later, when physicist Harold White discovered the paper and initiated research on the Alcubierre warp drive concept as part of NASA's Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory at the Johnson Space Center. White and his team investigated the theoretical principles behind the warp drive and explored potential methods for realizing it. In 2011, his first major report was delivered with a complete revision of the Alcubierre concept in a peer-reviewed paper titled Warp Field Mechanics 101. He was able to optimize energy requirements and bring the number down from Jupiter's mass to that of Voyager's 1. Though a significant step was achieved, 700 kilograms of pure energy is still impractical. Considering antimatter as fuel, producing one gram costs about 100 trillion dollars. Even if somehow we brought that number down to 10 billion dollars per gram, fuel alone would cost 3.5 quadrillion dollars. However, while it sounds unattainable, Remember that fuel cost is mainly about demand that translates directly into scalability. Also, antimatter can be found all around Earth. Harvesting efficiently is the only issue. Fast forward to the 2020s. Further revisions of the warp drive from Eric Lenz, Sean D. B. Fell, and Lavinia Heisenberg proposed solutions to the negative energy requirement. They claim that by modifying the warp bubble within certain configurations, negative energy is no longer a requisite. While most of these theories are highly speculative and somewhat detached from the realms of what is currently understood, therefore possible, one thing is quite evident. Warp drive research is getting serious. Warp bubble, central to Alcubierre warp drive theory, involves the creation of a localized region of distorted spacetime around the spacecraft. Within this bubble, spacetime is contracted in front of the spacecraft and expanded behind it. This contraction and expansion of spacetime forms a warp, or a distortion that enables faster-than-light travel without violating the principles of relativity. The key to creating and maintaining the warp bubble lies in the distribution of energy and matter within space-time. To better understand this, let's visualize what negative space curvature means. You can imagine space-time as a flat fabric that extends towards infinity. Large, dense bodies can influence the fabric of space-time. The larger the mass, the more it distorts or warps the fabric of space-time. 
to better understand this distortion, imagine two photons traveling perfectly parallel to each other in a perfect line of the space-time continuum. When these beams of light enter the region of warped space-time, both beams curve towards a common center, no longer being parallel to each other. This is what is considered positive energy. In negative energy space-time distortion, they also curve, however, away from each other, as if space-time diverges instead of converging. In the Okubieri warp drive concept, exotic matter with negative energy density is proposed as the means to achieve the space-time curvature necessary for warp travel. The problem is, negative energy has never been observed anywhere in nature. Solving the negative energy requirement is perhaps the single most critical obstacle in realizing the dream of warp drives. Warping spacetime sound incredibly complex, but Alcubierre's idea was incredibly simple. He started with a basic question. Is there a curvature of spacetime that can push things around? In other words, make a spaceship move. To verify this, he used Einstein's field equation in reverse, where he assumed a given answer or space-time curvature and worked backwards to find input parameters. In simple terms, he started with a solution to get to the requirements. In the field equation, the right side represents the distribution of mass, while the left side you have the calculation of the geometry of space-time. In other words, space-time tells matter how to move and matter tells space-time how to curve. The field equation is very complex to work with and requires extensive computational power. However, while complex, this equation can render more solutions than just what Alcubierre developed, meaning that there might be more ways of warping space-time within a given configuration that allows faster-than-light movement. This also may include a configuration that does not require negative energy. In fact, one may speculate that warping space may not be entirely dependent on matter configuration, as in negative energy. It is possible that by simply manipulating energy distribution around the ship, the effect of space-time expansion can be achieved. In other words, exotic matter does not necessarily mean something that has never been observed or does not exist. What it actually means is that the effects of either energy or mass of a given material when manipulated generates the desired effects of anti-gravity. That is the key. To find ways in which matter can be manipulated into propagating the desired effect of anti-gravity. Solving the negative energy requirement would open up a new frontier in space exploration, enabling humanity to venture beyond the confines of our solar system and explore the cosmos at speeds previously thought impossible. While solving negative energy requirements is a gigantic leap, other significant challenges remain, such as energy sources and the horizon problem. However, the most important takeaway here is to prove warp drive possible in small scales. When that happens, all else follows. As scientists continue to push the boundaries of our understanding of physics and engineering, the realization of warp drives may one day become a reality, leading us into a new era of interstellar exploration and adventure.